Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Sydney from PhoneDog.com and I'm here with the Pantech Laser and the HTC Freestyle, both from AT&T, both high-end, very popular messaging phones, feature phones. So we're gonna find out which one is better. The Freestyle is made by HTC and it features their popular Sense user interface. The Pantech Laser is the thinnest full sliding keyboard phone ever offered on AT&T and has an AMOLED display. Both $100 on contract, so which one is better? That's what we're gonna find out in the dog fight. Freestyle versus laser. I'm Sydney from phonedog.com. Let's go check it out. Okay, so here we have the HTC Freestyle on the left and the Pantech Laser on the right. I'll start off first of all with just physical design. Both phones look great. The Pantech Laser is extremely thin and uh, AT&T or Pantech are pretty proud of this. It's actually the thinnest full sliding keyboard phone ever offered from AT&T. So it's just under 0.4 inches thick. You know, it's not razor thin, you know, don't expect that or anything, but just considering that it does have a physical keyboard, it's extremely thin and sleek. It is made entirely out of plastic, but as you can see, it kind of has a metallic blue color. And then this front here is also sort of metallic blue. Uh, so, you know, it looks pretty nice, curved edges. It's a nice looking phone. The HTC Freestyle, on the other hand, in my opinion, does look better. Even though the, the, the laser looks good, the Freestyle, you know, it's designed by HTC, who typically, you know, they only make smartphones, so they're kind of used to designing high-end quality smartphones, and the Freestyle is no different. So it's made out of aluminum, just like their smartphones, so build quality is excellent, but that also means that it looks like an expensive, high-end, nice phone, and uh, you know, not just like a cheap or basic feature phone. So both of them look great. Uh, in my opinion, the, the Freestyle just looks better, um, but it could be that the Pantech laser maybe appeals more to teenagers or a younger audience, and then if you want kind of a more serious looking phone, the Freestyle perhaps. But um, in reality, the Freestyle is better and uh, better build quality too with aluminum instead of plastic. In terms of the display here, um, kind of similar size is a 3.1 inch display. The Freestyle has a 3.2 inch display, so not a whole lot of difference there. The Laser actually has an AMOLED display, whereas the Freestyle doesn't, but the resolution is a little bit higher than most feature phones. So it's 320 by 480, and then you have the AMOLED display with 480 by 800. So really, you know, the AMOLED display looks better, the colors, are just brighter. Um, it's very clear, very crisp. The text looks great. You know, there's not a whole lot of pixelation. It just looks very clear. And then the colors themselves, um, very well saturated. You know, AMOLED display, hands down, is definitely much better than just a basic display on the Freestyle. I mentioned in the, in the review of the Freestyle, the display is still great. It's very clear. Um, there's a clarity to it that you just really don't see in a lot of feature phones, but even considering that, um, the AMOLED display on the laser still looks better. However, one downside to the laser is that it's a resistive touchscreen, whereas the Freestyle has a capacitive touchscreen, and it's actually a very high quality capacitive touchscreen. The responsiveness was great, it's very smooth. Uh, I didn't have hardly any problems with the touchscreen. You know, I didn't have a whole lot of problems with the the touchscreen on the laser, but it's resistive. So, you know, it's not gonna be as accurate. Uh, if you don't have nails, you know, it can kind of be difficult to use because typically you want a stylus or something similar with a resistive touchscreen. If you're just gonna use your fingers, you know, it may be a little more difficult. So capacitive touchscreen on the Freestyle is definitely better. And even though the laser has an AMOLED display, you know, which looks better than, you know, just a normal display, what we see on the Freestyle, um, I still would pick the Freestyle in terms of display because that capacitive touchscreen is great. It makes everything so much easier, especially since you don't have a keyboard, it makes the typing experience so much easier. So personally, I'm gonna say, you know, the Freestyle wins in that department. We'll move on and talk a little bit about the UI on both of these phones, and I really like the UI on both of them. Neither one of them are, you know, just simple, plain Jane, cut and dry uh, feature phone UIs. They really add a lot of flavor um, to each device, respectively. So the Freestyle 
It is made by HTC, so it has HTC Sense UI, which is one of the reasons why a lot of people say it looks like an Android knockoff. It's not a knockoff, it's HTC's UI, and they usually use it on their Android phones, but they can use it on whatever phone they want, and they chose to use it on the feature phone. So you have the Sense Clock and Weather widget here. You're also given uh, you know, the full weather widget, uh, since the HTC friend stream widget, the clock messages. So all those things that you usually see on a feature phone or on, or on a smartphone, you also get with the freestyle, um, which is nice. I mean, these widgets are beautiful, but they're actually very useful and very functional. And uh, not just with the weather, but you know, messages, it's very useful. The calendar is very well designed. And then, you know, just sliding through, you can see it's very smooth. The UI is, is very well designed, so it looks great, but it's also something that will help you out. It's, it's a very useful UI, and then you have the three shortcuts at the bottom, then you have your menu with three panels. Uh, I'll mention briefly you know, a couple of other things that you get with Sense. You have one of the best notification systems on a messaging phone. You can see here I have a message, so it shows up there. Uh, if I hadn't read it yet, it would also show up in this sort of you know alert bar where it tells me battery status and all that and then there's also a notification bar where it would list any missed calls uh, or text message that I had received so the UI is very well designed um, and again it's it's great and it's cool that you can get that smartphone UI on a feature phone and you don't have to pay for data you know true if you don't have a data plan the weather information won't show up here it'll just be a clock but it still looks great so you know it's not really that big of a deal the laser also has a great UI, though it's not quite as refined and it's not quite as smooth. So you have your home screen here, which again, you have the default clock. You can change this clock, but I'll get onto that in a second. So you have the home screen here with the clock, and then you have a page for uh, shortcuts, and then you have a page for your favorite contacts, which you can add to and scroll through if you'd like to. So, <clears throat> a lot of the same options because you know you have you know shortcuts then you have shortcuts here favorite contacts and your favorite contacts however you know that's really all you can do with the laser you just have those three pages whereas on the freestyle you have those three pages plus more like the weather or the calendar and then you can also add others there's actually 10 options for pages that you can add here. So I have the calendar, but if I wanted the friend stream widget, photos, internet, the music player. Um, so there's a lot more options than what you get on the laser. And in my opinion, it looks better and it functions better. Okay, so one thing that the laser has that the freestyle doesn't have is a physical keyboard. And uh, you know, if you do a lot of texting, that's a, definitely a huge advantage. This is one of the best keyboards that I've used. Some people have complained about it being, about the keys being too firm, uh, which is something that you know, I personally had to get used to. And once I did, it really wasn't that bad. So if you use this phone in the store and you're thinking like, I don't really like the keyboard, if you just get used to it, um, it's really pretty easy to use. And uh, like I said, you know, one of the best keyboards out there, probably one of the best physical keyboards from a feature phone on AT&T. So you can see typing there. As you can see, it does also have threaded text messaging. So the keyboard looks great. The keys are pretty flat, as you can see. They're very flush to the surface, but they have this rubbery texture to them, so they're easy to grip and they're easy to feel. And then the island style also helps with that because they are so flat. They're not the rubbery, mushy type, um, so if you don't like that, good news. If you do like that, bad news. Um, but regardless, it is kind of rubbery, so you get a good grip on it. They are a little bit firm, um, but it's pretty easy to get used to. Overall, uh, the keyboard is very well designed, and you have plenty of um, punctuation keys, which I always like, comma, period, question mark, dot com. So that's very convenient. Now, like I said, you know, the freestyle does not have a physical keyboard. So you're going to be using uh, the virtual keyboard only, which could cause some problems. Um, I was a little worried about it whenever I first started using the phone because the display is kind of small. But I have to say I'm very surprised by how well this virtual keyboard performs. And the reason is because 
It's equipped with one of the best autocorrect functions that I've seen on a feature phone. So, you know, it's normal on a smartphone if you were to misspell a word, for example, if I wanted to type the and I accidentally pressed the R, it would automatically know that I'm trying to type the and when I push spacebar, it automatically corrects it. That seems like a simple thing, but most feature phones don't do that. Even simple things like I am, it needs an apostrophe. If I were to push space on any other feature phone, including the Pantech Laser, it would not know to correct it. There's no autocorrect functionality, whereas here it automatically adds uh, that apostrophe. So, you know, one of the best autocorrect features I've seen on a feature phone, and because of that, um, typing was pretty easy. I didn't have to worry a whole lot about being careful, you know, typing slowly and pressing the key, ex pressing the letter exactly on its key. You know, that spell check and that autocorrect, it worked so well. So, you know, I'm still going to say that if you do a lot of heavy texting, then, you know, a physical keyboard is always going to be better for you. But even if you just do, you know, texting, moderate texting, the freestyle still works pretty well. And I'm definitely impressed with that. So, you know, that depends on if you're, you know, a heavy texter uh, or, you know, if you prefer a physical keyboard. But just know that the virtual keyboard is nothing to complain about on the freestyle. Both phones do uh, have threaded text messaging. So that's one thing they both have, which is nice. I'll talk a little bit about uh, the camera now on both phones. Neither one of them is really great. The Pantech Laser has a 3 megapixel camera, no autofocus, as you can see, there's no flash. It has, you know, certain features like smile detection, there's a self timer, you can change the brightness or the white balance, you know, just minor things like that. Same thing with the Freestyle, it's a 3.2 megapixel camera, again, fixed focus. Uh, does have a digital zoom and a timer. So, you know, neither one is is really, you know, that great. I did notice that the three megapixel camera on the Freestyle is, is very bad quality. Um, the pictures were worse than, you know, what I've seen with other three megapixel cameras, including the laser. So, you know, I'm gonna say overall, neither one of them are great and they have the same specs. However, the quality of the camera on the Freestyle is just, not as good. Pictures were rough, they were kind of blurry, whereas on the laser, at least I could take a decent snapshot, um, and it was okay for that, but you know, neither one very impressive. They do both capture video, uh, VGA quality video with the laser, HVGA with the freestyle. Uh, nothing to shout about there. I mean, I don't think the quality of the video capture is so low, I don't think you would really be able to use it for anything worthwhile, but you do still have that option at least. Now, battery performance on both of these phones uh, is not outstanding, so that's a negative for both. Neither one really wins there. The Freestyle ships with a 1300 milliamp hour battery. The Laser ships with a 1000 milliamp hour battery. And, you know, honestly, battery performance was about the same. It lasted, uh, they both lasted about two days with, you know, normal to heavy use, uh, which isn't great. You know, I've heard a lot of people complain about the battery life on both of these phones, mostly because most feature phones or messaging phones can last, you know, four to five days with light use or on standby, you know, at least three days with heavy use. So, you know, two days with normal to light use is really not that great. But the thing that's important is that it's long enough to get you through a full day easily. It will easily last you a full day and then you can charge it at night if you want to or possibly get through one more day with it. So, you know, yeah, not as good and you may want to complain about it, but it at least will get you through a full day, which, you know, a lot of smartphones can't do that. Now, in terms of, of media, you know, music and different things like that, they both do have a music player. The Freestyle has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. The Laser does not. It has a USB port and then that's pretty much it. It's so thin, you know, it doesn't have a 3.5 or even a 2.5 millimeter headphone jack. So, you know, a huge advantage there to um, the Freestyle for having the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So I want to just briefly talk about um, web browsing on both of these phones. I understand that you know, feature phones are not typically used for web browsing, and if you're gonna do a lot of web browsing, more than likely you're gonna buy a smartphone. So, you know, I understand that it's not typically used for that. Um, however, I did wanna mention it just because 
the freestyle does so well with web browsing and so it's, it's worth noting that if you are going to do light web browsing or you might just need it on rare occasions, uh, the freestyle is definitely better. Uh, mostly because you know data speeds are better, it has a faster processor, and not only that, but the um, display actually supports multi-touch for pinch to zoom. So I'll load up Phone Dog and then see if I can do the same thing with the laser. Uh, the laser's web browsing abilities are very minimal um, and it's, it's very slow. It doesn't load the page very well. So this really isn't a contest because um, the freestyle wins easily, hands down. I just wanted to point out that if you are gonna do light web browsing, then the freestyle is definitely better. As you can see, it loaded faster. Um, it supports that multi-touch and it works pretty well, you know once it loads, so. So, you know, definitely impressive there. So if you do need that, definitely get the freestyle. The laser is okay, but it's really not worth it. And you can only browse the web in landscape mode, uh, which can be kind of irritating. And then it sort of just froze, kind of just stopped loading. So anyway, just one quick note there with web browsing, freestyle is better. Okay, so there they are guys, the Freestyle, the Laser, both of them from AT&T, both top-notch high-end phones. Um, same price, $99 on contract for both phones, although you could probably get them for cheaper if you look you know, at other stores or if you don't get them straight from AT&T. But you know, straight from AT&T, same price. Which one is better? Um, I'm gonna say the Freestyle simply because the build quality is better, it looks better. I think Sense UI is just way more refined and has more options than what you see on the laser. The laser is great and I'm definitely very impressed with how far the UI has come for feature phones, but it still doesn't beat Sense UI um, on the freestyle. Capacitive touchscreen is always gonna beat out a resistive touchscreen. And in terms of messaging, you know, if you do heavy texting, then yeah, physical keyboard would be better, but you know, still the virtual keyboard was great. So for me, the freestyle is the winner, but you guys can decide, you know, which one do you prefer and which one do you really need? But that's it. Thanks guys for watching. I'm Sydney from PhoneDog.com. Uh, be sure to check out PhoneDog.com for more news, updates, and reviews. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, my screen name is It's My Job to Know. You can ask me a question. I'll try my best to answer it as soon as I can. But that's all for me now. I'm Sydney from PhoneDog.com. Thanks guys for watching. I'll see you guys later.